Welcome to another tutorial video from Tolomats. Make sure and subscribe for more. In this video, we're looking at the perpendicular distance formula. We're getting the distance from a point to a line. This is the formula that's in your log tables on page 19. And just to give you a bit of background before we get into doing an example. So in this picture here, you can see that the person here is taking a free kick. And there's many, there's infinite amount of ways that that football can get to this white line. The shortest way is going to be by following this red line. And if we follow this red line, what's happening here basically is that it's creating a 90 degree angle at that white line. So we said there's infinite lines it can take, all of these blue lines, but the red line is the shortest distance and it will create that 90 degree angle when it hits that white line. So here you can see it when it's sketched out. Um, so the shortest distance is that red line when it creates a right angle at the line that we're trying to get the distance to. So before we get to our example, the formula is written down here from our log tables on page 19. A couple of pieces of information you just need to be careful with once again is that the A, B and the C are what you're subbing into your formula. Now the A is the number that's in front of the X in the equation of the line. The B is the number in front of the Y from our equation. And then you have your C, which is the number on its own, the constant, the C. And they're the three numbers that you're going to have to sub in to your perpendicular distance formula. So let's go and do an example. So this example from our text and tests is asking us to find the perpendicular distance from the point 2 minus 4 to the line 3x minus 4y minus 17 equals 0. So perpendicular distance draws my attention so to page 19 in your log tables and we take down our formula. Like every exam question we're doing, we must write down our formula first of all. So our formula is AX1 plus BY1 plus C all over the square root of A squared plus B squared. On the top of my fraction, I put these into the modulus brackets because that means my answer must be positive. So next thing I would do is write down the values of my a, b and c before I sub them into my equation. So my a is the number in front of the x, which is 3. My b is the number in front of the y, which is minus 4. And my c is the constant on its own, which is minus 17. My x1 and my y1 are my coordinates. So x1, y1. So now I'm going to fill in my formula. So best thing to do here is to use brackets. So when I'm subbing in my a, just make sure that the three is going within a bracket. So it's going to be three within a bracket times my x1, which is two. The formula then has a plus b, which is giving me minus four times my y1, which is minus four as well. Plus my c, which is plus my constant, which is minus 17. That's the value of my c. Put in your modulus brackets and that's all over the square root of a squared, which is 3 to be squared, plus my b, which is minus 4 to be squared. Okay, so that's the perpendicular distance formula filled in. Uh, let's evaluate it. 3 by 2 is 6. Minus 4 by minus 4 is positive 16. Uh, and then plus minus 17 is negative 17. All over the square root of 3 squared is 3 by 3 is 9. 4 squared, which is negative 4 by negative 4, which is positive 16. Just be careful if you're using a Casio calculator there that that goes into brackets. Otherwise, your calculator will give you a negative, which we don't want. Adding the top line, we get distance is equal to uh, 6 plus 16 is 22. Take away 17 is distance of 5 over the square root of 25. So D is equal to 5 over square root of 25 is 5. So when I divide 5 by 5, I get 1. Now it's positive, so D is equal to 1. So the distance between the point and my line is 1 unit. I don't know if it's meters, centimeters, kilometers, whatever unit it is. But here I'm calling it a distance of 1 unit. Hope that helps. Thank you for watching another tutorial video from Tullamats. Make sure and subscribe.